In this video, I want to talk about Gitbook. Gitbook allows you to create a website where you can share your documentation in almost no time. If you know my channel and if you've seen my previous video, you know that I'm a huge fan of Docusaurus. Docusaurus allows you to build optimized websites quickly and you can only focus on your content. Docusaurus is fantastic and it's a great tool and I think it's really worth it to be used if you want to create a beautiful website. If you want to find out more about Docusaurus, I will put a link here at the top of the video where you can click and you can see my course on Docusaurus. The only problem with Docusaurus is that if you want to create your documentation website, you need to be able and you need to know a bit how to code. This makes it very powerful on one end because it allows you to create and customize your website as you want. On the other hand, if you have to collaborate with people who don't know how to code very well, then that could be a problem. Consequently, I think that Gitbook is a great alternative to Docusaurus because it's a powerful and provides a simple editing experience. It is based on Markdown, same as Docusaurus, but with Gitbook you can use their online editor. And with their online editor, you can collaborate with colleagues in a very simple way. They don't, you don't need to have coding experience or design required. Gitbook is pretty standardized, but at the same time it is also very flexible and allows you to collaborate in real time with different people. So it provides an advantage compared with Docusaurus, where you need to be able to learn a bit how to code, you need to be familiar with uh, GitHub, and uh, it takes a little bit more time to build and deploy the website. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick introduction to Gitbook. I will show you how to get started, how to create a space, how to organize your documentation, and how to edit and change the content structure of your documentation website. At the end of the video, we will create a public URL that we will be able to share with everyone on the web. However, I will also show you at the same time how to keep this URL private if you want to have a private documentation for your company or just to share with your colleagues. In the next video, we are going to go a bit more in detail. We are going to see how we can add more rich content to our Gitbook documentation. Also, we are going to see how to sync Gitbook with GitHub, which I think it makes it very powerful because their web editor is fantastic no uh, problem with that, it works very well, but at the same time I prefer to code and I think it's much easier, at least for me, to work directly on GitHub and then write my documentation and sync it later on with Gitbook. So as you can see from their website, you can add rich embeds, code snippet, markdown to your website, you can customize um, your website to a, to a certain extent, and you can add custom domain, you can have advanced branding, and as previously mentioned, you can sync it with GitHub. And you can very easily, and that's I think is the great power of Gitbook, is that you can have a version control from their online editor, you can have a sync collaboration, and you have a search bar enabled by default. And your colleagues can add um, comments directly inside the web editor. One important thing to notice is that while Docusaurus is free forever and for everyone, Gitbook is a little bit different. So if you have, and if you want to use it for an individual use, so you just want to work on a project on your own, then it's free. And you have 10 public and private spaces. And you can add custom domain and you can have GitHub Sync at no cost. So that's free. However, if you want to use their functionalities, which I mentioned before, which is a collaboration with a team, unfortunately, you will have to pay. And it costs $6.40 per month, starting at five users. One important thing to notice though, is that if you have a free and open source project, they will give you a community account for free. And I work on a variety of different projects, and I will show you later my personal Gitbook account. And I was able to apply for a community account because I created a couple of open source projects, and therefore I'm able to use the community account for free. So if you're working on an open source project, don't worry too much about the pricing, because it's created that you can use Gitbook for free. So from their web page, you can sign up with GitHub or you can create an account. I have already an account and I will show you my account. So here I have two organizations. So I have my personal account where I have no spaces and I will show you today how to create a space. And I've created an organization here, which is called, which is the Center for the Built Environment. And as you can see here, I have multiple spaces where I have the documentation for the CBE Thermal Comfort Tool and the CBE Clima Tool. So if you click here, you can actually see the full documentation and you can see the share here on the left side. You can copy this page and then you can see the documentation online. 
So you will see that the documentation is very beautiful. And if you want to see what all is available in, with Gitbook, you can either look at one of my projects or you can actually look at Gitbook itself. So I think this is the best example to see all the things that you can add inside Gitbook. So here we have on the left side a table of content. Here on the right side, we have a navigation bar, which allows us to navigate in within the page. And then here we have a search bar, which is enabled by default, and I think it's extremely handy. And you can search within your document. For example, in order to add the search bar with Docusaurus, it's a little bit more complex and a little bit more uh, difficult to add it. As you can see, inside our documentation, we can easily add images, we can add snipp snippets of code, we can add embed videos, and so forth. But it's enough talking, let me show you in action how you can start creating your project and how you can share it online and how you can start working on it and perhaps collaborating with other people. So in order to start a new project, you can create a new space. In this case, I'm going to call it YouTube. And then you can choose the color and you can have it public or private. And then you just have to hit on create. In this case, I'm going to have it public. Here we have the initial page. So this is the main landing page that our users are going to see when they land on our website. Here you can start customizing it, and as you can see, Gitbook allows you to um, use some template. So you can have a blank page, you can start writing an API, you can answer a frequently asked questions, change log, and guide. I'm going to start with an empty page. But before writing our content, I will just want to show you here the left bar. Of course, this left bar is only accessible to you that you are editing your documentation website, and of course, this is not going to be visible to people which are entering on your website. So here you can have the, on the edits tab, you will see all the changes that have been made to the page. And it's very nice to see all the draft archived and merged. So it's basically like version control, if you are familiar with GitHub version control. And it's very nice and very powerful to look at history and see all the changes that have been applied to your documentation. Then you have the activities here. So again, we can see all the activities, comments, and so forth. In the share page, you can set the visibility. So we set it to public. Of course, you can change that at any time and change it to private. And this is going to be the URL that we're going to be able to share to other people so they can access our documentation. So as you can see here, I have this, my URL, which is Federico Tartarini at no, .gitbook.io and YouTube. And this is the initial page. Of course, we don't have anything yet. It's just empty, but it's going to update as we add documentation. You can also choose to have it unlisted or listed. What does it mean? That if it's listed, then you can search for your page using like a, a Google search engine or any other search engine out there like Bing or DuckDuckGo. But if you say that is unlisted, then people will not be able to search for your page. However, your page is, the link is going to be still public. And if you want, as I previously mentioned, you can also configure a domain setting. So you can also set your personal domain if you want to change this domain and you want to change it, for instance, to the name of your website. You can change the design. Okay, so here you can change, for instance, the icon. You can add an image or an icon. So I can change uh, to something else uh, if I want. So let me just pick an icon, doesn't really matter. And uh, you can change the theme and the color. Just keep in mind that also these uh, could be limited. So if you want to have a fancy header and themes, like this one bold and dark, then eventually you have to upgrade. Otherwise, you can use the light theme or just no theme here. Then you have fonts, you have optional features that you can allow people to export your PDF. Again, this feature is only uh, enabled. You can enable this feature only if you have a, a pro account. But you get all these features for free if you apply for a community account. In team, we can control who is allowed to access our project. Again, it's a pro features. And then you have integration. And integration is very handy because you can integrate with GitHub. I'm not going to explain how to integrate with GitHub in this video, but check part two of this video series in, to see how you can integrate with GitHub. We can also add it to Google Analytics so we can track our website. But analytics also come by default inside GitBook itself. We can track here how many views per page and the rating of our page. The rating is very nice because by default, and you can disable that if you want to, you can add the rating at the bottom of the page. So as you will write the page right now, there is nothing. Here at the bottom, there are going to be like some emojis that your users can click on and can rate your page. So basically you can track and you can check if people like your documentation and find it useful. Finally, we have the advanced, so you can change the space URL, the custom domain, and of course you can delete your project. Let's start editing our content. So in each page, we have a title page. So let me collapse this because we no longer need it. So in each page, we have a title. We have a page description. 
Okay, so this could be documentation. And then here we can add our content. Here you can use this plus icon to add some specific um, headings, bullet list, order list, task list, and so forth. So let's say that we want to start with adding two. And here we say introduction. Then we can write something here inside the introduction. And let's see what also we can do. We can add sub headings. So we have three types of headings. These can be accessed from here, or you can also use markdown. So if you're familiar with markdown, you can put the three ashes and then space. And then here you can say subsection. And as you can see, this web editor is quite smart and already picks up that we want to have an adding tree. We can add bullet list here, and you can say item one, item two, and so forth. Then we can add order the list, task list. You can add the block quotes for your quote, and this is going to have, like in Markdown, this uh, like line on the left side showing you that is a quote. You can add images, which is very handy, table, code blocks. So let's say if you want to show some code, you can say in, uh, um, let's, add, uh, let's write some code in Python. Okay, so here we have added our code. And uh, of course, this can be further modified. So here we can also specify the language, here Python. And this is going to print uh, and is going to like um, render the, the based on the language that you have selected. If you want, as you show, you can add it in tab, and here you can add also different version. So if you want to show it how you write it in Python, but if you want to show it how to write it in JavaScript, you can say console log, for instance, and we can say hello here, and here we can specify a different language, okay? So we can say JavaScript. And here we can also select it with this arrow here, we can select JavaScript. So here we have a tab and we can toggle between Python and JavaScript if we want to log some code or if we want to display some code written in different languages. We are not limited to add that, but we can add images, tables, let's add a quick table, which have a title and the content. So pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So under the table, we can see also what else we can add. We can add tabs, which we saw before. We can add a link to a page, an API, hints. Hints are very nice if you want to just like actually display something. And then of course, here you have all the other things that you can select. So danger, success, warning, and info. Then here we can add math equation, which is also very handy. So you can render math equation using LaTeX. And of course, here it depends, like you will have to probably learn a bit of LaTeX if you want to. But for instance, with the underscore and then curly braces two, you can put it as an underscore. If you want to say at the power of two, for instance, we can use this symbol and then we can put curly braces and then again, at the power of two. Uh, again, this is not the scope of this video. I just want to show you like uh, some quick features that you can use. Uh, and I want to show you that it's very powerful. So lots of things that we can add. However, I will recommend you to just look at, in this specific case, how to write the equation with LaTeX. Uh, but if you want to find out more about all the functionality of, of Gitbook, uh, perhaps uh, it's also good that uh, you can check also their documentation. And let's open it again for the last time and see what else we can add. So a file, let's add the last thing, like let's add an image and we can choose an image to upload. And here I'm going to um, add like uh, just a, a thumbnail, one of my videos that I've added. So I can add the thumbnail, it's going to add and select the image. And here we can see the thumbnail of our video. And of course, underneath we can select a caption. Then in the image is... Um, is great because you can select a couple of other things. So you can select whether you want to align it left or center, and you can also replace the image if later on you change your mind and you want to change it with another image. So now that we've seen almost all the things that we can add to a page, let's see also the other things that we can do. So if you are here at the top, we can export it as a PDF. There is this functionality of import. You can import a Word file. You can import Google Docs, GitHub Wiki. Notion or Quip, or you can just simply upload a file inside here, or you can also specify the URL. Okay, so let's actually test that in a second. But before we test that, I want to show you here the table of content. So here on the left side, we have the table of content, and we can create a new. New, we can create a new page, which is going to be another page, and it's going to be underneath. And let's go actually and try to import a page from my uh, other um, from my other website. So here I've opened my page, which I created with Docusaurus. Let's actually see how we can import this page here inside the Gitbook. So we can go back to our project here, and we can click on import, and then we can say URL. Just always keep in mind that this functionality is in beta, so it might not work as you want. And now it's importing my content inside my page. 
So as you can see, it has actually worked. It did a decent job to some extent because you can see that now I have all the pages that they were inside here. So we can see the installation, introduction, download data, and these are all reflected here. However, it was able to pick up like the code snippets, but it was not able to pick up all the images and videos. So just to let you know, it kind of works and it, it's fine, it's nice, it's a nice feature. It took a lot of time to import these pages, but it's not uh, fully functional yet. So let me delete that section because now it was very messy. And uh, let's add a new year page so we can organize also text into groups. So here, let me show you what a group is. You can see that on their website, they explain like what are spaces, what are organization, what are accounts, and you have editing your content. So inside here, we could have a new section. We can have a new section like you say contribute. And in this section, we are going to add all the files that we want to add. Like for instance, you can have the code of conduct, the readme, how to contribute and so forth. So here you can say code of conduct, and then we can look for a for instance, a template on uh, GitHub, and we can see like this file here. So we can just go in row, we can copy it. This should work pretty well because it's already written in Markdown. So if we paste it inside here, well, it didn't actually work because it was actually thinking that was uh, um, some code. So we can open Notepad instead. We can just uh, save this file here. So we're going to save it as, and then we are going to save it as code.md. And then we're going to save it and then we can go back here and then we can import and then browse and then we can actually see this file here open file and this has worked okay so yeah a bit convoluted but if you are working from github trust me it's going to be super simple because you just have to copy and paste that file in a markdown file and then gitbook is going to import that file automatically but it's nice we can see all the content here standards and all the headings here on the on the right side Finally, let's see also what else we can add here in the table of content. So we can add a link to an external page. Of course, we could have added a link to this code of conduct here, and we could have just simply done that. So here we can say code of conduct, and this is going to add a link that then people will be able to click here. And we can also then put this code of conduct inside here, inside the contribute. Of course, it doesn't have to be inside over there. This is also a very nice feature that you can drag and drop pages wherever you want. We can add a new variant or can import a file. And that's basically it. If I want to add a sub page or inside index, I can just add it here. So as you can see, I drag, drag and drop it under index. So this is going to be a sub page inside index. Okay. And the navigation automatically goes to untitled because, which is the new page that we just added, because it's a sub page inside index and it's just next in line. And inside here, we can just put a guide here. Let's just uh, copy and use uh, a template, and then we can say your guide. And then this is very nice also because it's collapsible. So if it takes less space, less space in the um, table of content. A few things that I want to explain before uh, I leave you for this video and uh, how to save. So here we have uh, done some changes. So here we can say first commit, and this is the first version of the website, and I can save these changes. Now, if I go to the edit, edit tab, before we didn't have anything, but now we can merge my edit with the name of first commit inside our document. This is a very nice thing to keep track. So if you go merge, now we can see the first commit, we can see all the draft. So if now I change something, guide, um, I change guides, now automatically you will see that there is a new draft. The new draft has not been merged, and you can see here that is draft. Now we can describe my changes, um, change the title to guides and then you can save this and then of course you can merge it this is also a very nice feature because if you leave the website or if your connection stops working you can still edit the document and your changes are not going to be lost even if you haven't not merged them and then of course when you're going to be syncing with uh, github then uh, you will be able to merge uh, different commits and different changes uh, that people have done uh, either using github or uh, using this thing now we are ready to share our website so we can click here on share we already have the link we can click on open and now we should be able to see our new and nice website uh, so this is great uh, we have the initial page we have the code of conduct that if we click we get redirected to that page uh, and we have the index, which has also a sub page, which has the guides page. As you can see now that we have added some content, we can also see that the user can actually rate our page. 
So here they can say that my page was helpful. And then we're going to be able to see this uh, information into the analytics page. So we have one rating uh, and uh, the person have uh, uh, rated the rating page uh, here. And we can see that there is one rating. Unfortunately, the uh, analytics is not uh, updating the views, uh, but we can see that this is green uh, and we can see how many positive comments, negative comments uh, and uh, um, like uh, no, no change, I would, I would say. Uh, but this is very helpful for us so we can understand how to improve our documentation if it gets like a lot of uh, negative uh, impressions. In the next video, we're going to see how to um, change a bit the website and how to connect it with GitHub. If you like this video, please consider liking my video and subscribing to my channel. It really helps. If you want to support my channel because you like the type of content that I release and I create, please consider buying me a coffee or uh, becoming a Patreon or support me on Patreon. You can find more information down in the video description below. And uh, if you have any comment or question, just please leave a comment in the video description. Or if just you like the video, please leave a comment. Thank you very much for listening and see you in the next video.